Hello everyone and thank you for coming to the channel. In this video, I'll be introducing a notorious prison escapee from Japan who successfully escaped four times, Yoshi Shiratori. Shiratori is the real-life inspiration for the character Shiraishi Yoshitake in the popular manga Golden Kamui. I'm a huge fan of this manga and have read all the volumes. I'll also be discussing Shiratori's elaborate escape methods, which rival those of Frank Lee Morris who famously escaped from Alcatraz prison. First Incarceration Born in Aomori Prefecture, Shiratori was given up for adoption to a tofu shop at a young age. However, the working environment might not have been suitable, as his behavior gradually worsened and he began to engage in crimes such as burglary and theft whenever he found the opportunity. In 1933, Shiratori and his accomplices broke into a general store to commit theft, but they were discovered by the owner, who was tragically killed during their escape. Subsequently, they split up, but two years later, one of his accomplices was arrested for breaking into a storehouse, leading to intensified investigation by the Aomori Prefectural Police. Upon his accomplice's arrest, Shiratori surrendered and was sent to Aomori Prison. However, he was subjected to intense torture and interrogation in prison, being forced to confess to being the mastermind behind the murder of the store owner. Although Shiratori insisted that it was his accomplice who committed the murder, the interrogation only grew more severe. Eventually, after enduring torture, interrogation, and unjust punishments, Shiratori attempted to escape from prison. Escape. Shiratori's first escape plan was to take advantage of a brief moment when he could go outside. At that time, there was no toilet in the cell, and excrement was disposed of in a bucket provided for that purpose. Going outside was only allowed when disposing of excrement. Shiratori used this moment to acquire a piece of wire that had fallen outside and fashioned it into a makeshift key for his cell. Shiratori was said to be quite skillful with his hands. The key was made from a metal hoop from the bucket in the bathroom. Then, in the late night when the guard's vigilance was low, Shiratori used the key to successfully escape. It is said that there were spare keys made as later investigation by the guards revealed that the key fit almost all the locks in the prison, which astonished them. However, during his escape, he ate wild plants, which caused stomach pain, and he was captured and imprisoned again just two days later. Second escape, in 1940, Shiratori was transferred to the Kasuge prison in Tokyo. However, the following year, the Tokyo bombings during the Pacific War caused chaos in the prison, leading to the decision to transfer many prisoners to other facilities due to the risk of escape. Shiratori was sent to the Akita prison as a life prisoner. Due to his poor behavior in prison, Shiratori was moved to a punishment cell called the Calming Room. This cell had a concrete floor, copper plates on the walls, and only a small amount of light coming in from a skylight. There was no gap in the door and Shiratori was always handcuffed. However, even in this situation, Shiratori planned his second escape. Shiratori focused on the skylight, evaded the guard's eyes, and practiced climbing the wall every day. He also made an improvised saw from a rusty nail and wood he found in the punishment cell, wrapped a futon around it, leaned it against the wall, climbed up, and shaved off the skylight frame. He repeated this process for about 10 days, destroyed the skylight, and successfully escaped from the punishment cell. Additionally, he stole wood to break through the high outer wall surrounding the prison, successfully escaping again on June 14, 1942, at the age of 34, the frigid land of Hokkaido, to Abashiri Prison. After escaping from Akita Prison, Shiratori took three months to return to Tokyo. There, he visited the home of a guard named Kobayashi, who had been kind to him when he was transferred to Tokyo before. Kobayashi was the only person who had shown kindness to Shiratori at the Kosuge Prison in Tokyo. Surprised, Kobayashi welcomed the exhausted Shiratori and urged him to surrender, offering him protection and advice. Shiratori accepted Kobayashi's persuasion and turned himself in. Following Kobayashi's instructions, Shiratori surrendered and was transferred to the detention center where Kobayashi worked. However, he was soon transferred to Abashiri Prison in Hokkaido, where he was incarcerated in a solitary confinement cell, 
reserved for violent criminals. Using miso soup, the third escape. Incarcerated in a strict management regime, Shiratori, confined to a solitary cell reserved for violent criminals, was subjected to extreme violence by the guards. Enraged, Shiratori resisted, tearing off his handcuffs. The guards then devised heavy handcuffs specifically for Shiratori, weighing about 20 kilograms and nearly indestructible. Shiratori was immobilized, forced to eat in a dog-like position, unable to use the toilet, and denied bathing, leading to excreting waste in his cell. The handcuffs dug into his flesh, attracting maggots in the summer. Determined to escape for the third time, Shiratori first attempted to destroy the handcuffs by pounding them on the ground or trying to pull out the bolts with his mouth. He also tried corroding the bolts and door frames with miso soup provided during meals. Through repeated attempts, the salt in the miso soup corroded the bolts and door frames, weakening them. One late night, Shiratori executed his escape plan, destroying the handcuffs and door frames dislocating his joints to crawl out through the door hole, smashing through the skylight with his head, and pulling out the chimney support pillar to lean against the outer wall so he could climb and successfully escape from the prison. After successfully escaping for the third time, Shiratori hid in the mountains. However, during his two years of hiding, World War II ended. Learning of Japan's defeat, Shiratori contemplated suicide. However, seeing American soldiers and Japanese women getting along made him feel foolish for considering suicide, so he decided against it. Descending to the foot of a village, Shiratori was mistaken for a thief and attacked by the villagers. Despite asserting his innocence, the villagers did not listen and beat him with sticks. Enraged, Shiratori killed one of them and was subsequently restrained by the police. Shiratori claimed self-defense but the Sapporo District Court deemed it excessive and sentenced him to death. He was then incarcerated in Sapporo Prison, where his final escape attempt would soon begin. After being incarcerated in Sapporo Prison, Shiratori was closely monitored by groups of six guards at all times, and his cell was reinforced. Additionally, permission was granted to shoot him if he exhibited suspicious behavior. However, Shiratori carefully observed his cell and devised an escape plan. He noticed that the floor of his cell was thin, so he improvised a saw from the metal part of a hand bucket, similar to one he had made in Aomori prison, and cut through the floorboards. Once through the floor, Shiratori used dishes to dig a hole bit by bit every day until he reached the outside of the cell. He successfully escaped for the fourth time by climbing over the fence. Despite being under 24-hour surveillance, the guards were considered negligent for allowing the escape and were disciplined with pay cuts and extensive written reprimands. After successfully escaping for the fourth time, Shiratori was missing for about nine months. However, when questioned by a police officer in town, he accidentally mentioned that he was an escape convict, leading him to voluntarily surrender at the police station. Despite being on death row, Shiratori's case was re-evaluated by the Sapporo High Court and his plea was accepted, reducing his sentence to 20 years in prison. Subsequently, Shiratori was incarcerated at the Fuchu Prison in Tokyo, where he was once again fitted with special handcuffs and leg irons and placed in solitary confinement. However, upon seeing Shiratori's condition, the Fuchu Prison Warden, Ryozo Suzuki, immediately ordered that Shiratori be treated the same as other prisoners. While both the guards and Shiratori were surprised by this decision, Suzuki had correctly deduced that Shiratori's motivation for escape stemmed from intense hatred towards guards and police. Touched by Suzuki's compassion, Shiratori vowed never to escape again and accepted his punishment, demonstrating his inherently loyal nature. Afterwards, the escape king's life took a different turn. While serving his sentence, Shiratori earnestly engaged in prison work and eventually earned the reputation of being a model prisoner. Approximately 14 years after his incarceration in Fuchu, in 1961, Shiratori's exemplary behavior led to his parole. Initially, Shiratori struggled to readjust to the outside world, but with the support of his sponsors and the efforts of Warden Suzuki, he successfully reintegrated into society as a construction worker. Despite working diligently and utilizing his physical strength, 
Shiratori succumbed to the effects of aging. At the age of 66, he developed heart disease and passed away in 1979 at the Mitsui Memorial Hospital at the age of 71. Following his death, Shiratori was initially slated to be laid to rest as an unclaimed body. However, a woman who had been a child and a close acquaintance of his when he was temporarily released came forward, claimed his remains, and gave him a proper burial. Here, we bring the curtain down on the life of Yoshi Shiratori. He orchestrated daring escapes that earned him a place in the annals of escape history, but ultimately he successfully reintegrated into society. His dedication to work during his incarceration and his success as a construction worker after his parole testify to his strength of will and effort. While various factors undoubtedly influenced his life and led to his escapes, his ultimate success in carving out a life for himself through his choices and actions is commendable. The story of Yoshi Shiratori will continue to be passed down through generations, serving as a testament to the harsh realities of life and the strength and hope of humanity. How was today's video? I will continue to introduce topics such as Japanese history, mysterious stories, unsolved mysteries, and Japanese supernatural phenomena. So I would be grateful if you could consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching.